I was born in Louisiana at a very segregated time. And at a young age, I remember my mom and my dad arguing. The next thing, you know, my mom's saying goodbye to everybody and we're in this big car with everything that we could possibly take. As a, you know, three-year-old, I, I took sides and um, I took my mom's side. And it really didn't matter to me. I was going wherever she was going and we were a team. She had other plans for me. She wanted me to have every education. She didn't want things to be segregated. We moved all the time, and it was because we had no money. You know, my mom would pay the rent, maybe be able to do one month. We just seemed to take stuff out of boxes because we just wouldn't really know how long we were going to be in a place. She worked day and night at her job, trying to get a daughter through private schools where I was one of the only black kids. You know, a lot of the kids didn't want me there. A lot of the parents didn't want me there. One of the projects that we had in school was to bring in our dollhouses. I spent the night with tape and yellow legal paper trying to put together a two-story dollhouse, and it was horrible. It was just like leaning and swaying. That was the difference. I was the black kid in the class who didn't have any money. It really, it took a toll on her. There were times when she was just like, I can't do this anymore, you know, and she would drink. She would say, you know, I can't live anymore. She gave the least to herself, and, and when she got down on herself, I just, you know, I couldn't stand that because she was just, she was just Wonder Woman to me. The education, that was more important than having a place to live, than being able to pay the bills. We got through college with the skin of our teeth. I had everything that I'd ever dreamed of. Then right after I got married, my mom called me and said that she, you know, felt a lump. And I was just like, I was flattened. I mean, the, the, the airplane was falling out of the sky. It was just like, that couldn't possibly be happening to me. It couldn't be happening to my mother. And at that moment, Dr. Lisa knew things were about to change. She had a lumpectomy first. And, you know, we thought she was okay for a while, you know, and then my son was born. Then that's when she called me and said, it's, you know, it's, it's come back. And I was like, okay. The doctor said, your mother has a year to live. It's just like, that couldn't possibly be happening to me. It couldn't be happening to my mother. I scoured the earth to find out any cures. I started IVs on her, I'd go and get chemo with her. Here I was a doctor, and I couldn't save my own mother. And so that was just really hard. It got really bad right before Halloween and we were doing pumpkins. Then I went in to check in on my mom and she just, she wasn't there. And so I, I took her to the hospital. Then I just said, mom, you've got to come back to me just for a little bit so we can say goodbye. And her eyes flashed open, and she said one last thing. And then, and then she was like, I see you. And she was gone after that, and she just told me she loved me. And that was her last words. The world ended for me, you know? He stopped eating. I stayed in bed. I think I, I absolutely know for people it's possible to will themselves to just die. To try and find that way back, I think, is important for people to know. Because truly, um, it was my son who just came into my room, he just said, Mom, I need my mom back. And I realized that I had to stay here for him. I needed to be there for my son like my mom had been there for me.